Hello. Um, welcome to Jared's Corner. Uh, I've been away for a while. Um, uh, I've been working with um, some guys who is a local film company, and I've been involved with just one project, but I'm going to help them with others in the future. Um, just a quick little update, um, but I, I'm i not getting paid right now. Um, you know, right now is for fun, and that's cool. Um, I have no idea whether I'll, but maybe other opportunities will arrive, and I could do some other stuff. Um, which would be cool. But for now, I like this. Um, and I like this in the future too. This will be fun. I get film experience and I'm acting in their stuff because I want to be an actor and um, writer and other stuff. So this is. Things have just gone well for me. Um, maybe not everybody who watches this, you know, all ten of you, but you know, I'm the epitome of just trying to go and do what I want in terms of my dream. My dream is to act and do film stuff and. You know, in a way, I'm doing it. I yesterday, which was Saturday, the 16th, November 16th, as I today's the 17th as I film this. Um, wait, no, it's the 15th. Um, yes, we morning of Monday, no, November 17th, and it was the 15th, not the 16th. There's like a Christmas video they do, and um, when it when the video comes up, I will put a link in the description. So there's that, and um, I kind of wanted to address some things that have been on my mind. Other people have discussed this, and in a way, I just kind of didn't think there's really any point to it, but screw it. Um, one is uh, the f film Exodus, Gods and Kings. Um, apparently comments Christian Bale made have um, you know, displeased um, some religious people. Um, I myself believe in God and um, in Jesus and all that good stuff. I'm not going to delve into what my religion is. I'm just gonna say that. Judge me if you want, um, but I won't judge you because that's just rude. Um, yeah, apparently he says um, he thought, you know, he thinks Moses was one of the most barbaric people he'd ever read. And then, after a while, like, there's this article I read, and I've read many articles, but one specifically, he goes on and just says, like, kind of how kind of shocking or whatever it is to hear the lead actor of the film talk bad about this character. And then it goes on and says, he basically says he thought, thinks uh, Moses was a, most likely a schizophrenic person, and he had like a duty or something to God, and could have fulfilled it or fulfilled it better than he did. Um, and they. And when this, something's interesting about this, because it says he was interviewed by various uh, reporters.
reporters, journalists, and I just kind of wanted to know where the, you know, uh, original, um, source of this came from. I mean, there's many others, but, um, you know, there could have been, there's a bunch of reporters, and I would have thought, you know, if it was just him ta talking to a bunch of people who were asking questions, maybe, this kind of, to me, seems a little likely that he would, that somebody there, you know, wrote down or perhaps like recorded what he said and while it was you know a decent interview and or perhaps he just participated in just the listening and you know could write down like what his experience was there and what Christian Bale said to some of the other people and maybe he was able to ask a question or two maybe nothing pertained to those comments but if they were made at all, which I will get to in a minute, might be likely that he wasn't completely satisfied and he just kind of, I don't know, made some stuff up, like those comments. He or her, you know, whoever. Um, it, because I like Christian Bale as an actor. He's a great actor. That Terminator rant thing, you know, I don't judge him at all by that. Uh, you know, if you're a method actor and a dude keeps walking on the set in a very intense scene of your character, whether it's most, I can't remember if it was the most intense scene for the John, his John Connor character or just the whole film. I don't can't remember, but just for the sake of it, let's just say for his character, for John Connor, for Christian Bale's character, it was the most intense scene of that character. And you know, he's a method actor, he has to be very precise and very involved and dedicated and into the role. And when some guy keeps in your line of vision, peripheral or whatever, and you see maybe out of the corner of your eye, some guy walks on such a chick on the lights, it's the DP, and breaks your concentration, after a while, you may snap. You know, or maybe someone else. If someone else was in this position, it might not have blown up as much, but if it's a really depending on, depending on who the person is, uh, it could have been a lot worse. But basically, you know, the DP, you know, he he's supposed to make sure all the lights are fantastic the way it is, or it should be for the set. And then during the filming of it, while they're shooting the scene, perhaps if he sees something wrong, like, you know, don't go on, on onto the set, but just go as close as you can without disrupting anybody around there. And then if you think there's something wrong with the lights or whatever, you go to the director and you tell them that maybe, like, I think there's something wrong. Like, you know, there's, I don't know, there's but the lights. It just doesn't seem right to me or whatever. You know, you say that to the director. What you don't do is do what that guy did and he walked out multiple times, basically, like every single time they reshot. He kept doing that, and eventually someone's going to snap. And yes, he did that, but he also apologized that very day, and they were working together uh, after that. Um, but yeah, he I've seen a lot of Christian Bale interviews for Batman, Fighter, American Hustle, American Psycho... Because the dude intrigues me. His acting style is very good, and he's a great act. You know, he's a great actor. Um, you know, the dude's cool, in my opinion. And um, you know, if you like a certain actor or actors or director or directors, you want to know as much as you possibly could know about them. And in interviews, you kind of get that idea, at least how their acting is. 
or directing is some level um, and these comments just don't make sense to me first off he actually contradicts himself in the uh, interview um, which Christian Bale I have not seen or read any interview where he ever did that before so that's one kind of flag that goes up in the air you know because it's also I saw after saying like because the second thing was with you know I think Moses was schizophrenic and then he says however oh, before this movie I didn't really know anything about Moses but really Scott had said at least from what I've read other sources that he Christian Bale you know he read a lot of things about Moses as much as he could and he read the Bible especially the Exodus part like three times during the filming process and you know I'm pretty sure you would have gotten a good idea about Moses within that that long shoot um, you know he was a guy who wanted to save his people instead of having them being brutally massacred um, by Pharaoh and his orders. Um, and also, I think, if personally, if you, based off the script and if what you read doesn't make sense, I don't know, maybe I would act like a uh, thing twice about playing a certain character, like if it doesn't match up with the character and if you're not unable to, you know, compromise with bringing some realism to the, to the from the real life person to the screen as much as you possibly could. I don't know. I don't know if I would do it because there may be some conflictions. Like perhaps you could. Like I'm gonna read some stuff about the dude. You know, just to. You know, the character intrigues me. Let me just look some stuff up or whatever. Do my own little research. That was what I would do if it was a real person. Um, and if the script, well, it might be good. If it doesn't really add up, I might pass on it. You know. Unless I'm desperate and really close to broke. Um, depending if I'm that desperate, I may take it. But I don't know. This is just... Just something that's on my mind. It just doesn't make sense to me with the comments Christian Bale has made and seeing some interviews of him in the past. It just doesn't really add up, in my opinion. And I've seen some other interviews before this uh, quote unquote reporter coming in to tell you all this. Uh, uh, uh. Like, or some reporter wrote that down. And I've never been able to find the actual original source because it had to have been put on some website originally. Where did this come from? Where's the exact, the full interview? Not just that snippet. I want to actually read the whole interview or if it was filmed, I want to see the whole interview. I, I can't find any at all uh, from the original interview. Whether there's video or audio or if it was just written out, I can't find it anywhere. Um, that's just me. Maybe I'm not looking hard enough, but um, I've been busy and, you know, I don't have a whole lot of time to do that. Uh, so, I don't know, maybe I will not find out and I'll just be not really believing this further. Because until I actually find evidence of, like, an article that basically has like the full interview or something. I'm just calling bull on this. Try to zoom in. Oh, now I did. Yeah. Sorry, I thought I was zoomed in accidentally. Uh, but yeah, anyway, uh, it just seems a little fishy to me. Um, Another thing is Star Wars Episode 7, and I had, I was going to make a video about this before, but some people have already said how they felt 
I think Alpha Omega Sin, yes, I'm dropping names, he actually said it the best. And, um, I love Star Wars. I have always loved Star Wars. This jacket here is Star Wars. Hope you can see that. And, um, I love all of them. Even the prequels. However, uh, I did watch the original trilogy first. I was born in 94, and I, uh, for five years, I, um, watched the original trilogy, and I love them, every single second of them, they were all great. I think the prequels were very good, too, I mean, hell, even great, but, um, the original trilogy is superior, uh, it's because it's the original trilogy, and, um, very hard to beat the original, um, Episode 4 actually is my favorite film of the franchise. I could go into more about that, but that's not what this is about. It's about Disney and Lucasfilm. My reaction then is what it is now. Why? And I know Lucas wants to, you know, retire from the huge big budget and just make little art films, which would be cool, you know, just to see him do stuff like what he used to do with, like, THX 1138 and stuff of that nature, and I would be open to watch some of that stuff, because I like George Lucas, say what you will, but he is a very good storyteller, he's a great filmmaker, he knows what he wants, and he does uh, get it, whether you like it or not. That's another thing, but he actually, he can't admit he does, uh, he gets what he wants on film and does it the way he wants to, um, and I respect that, but my thing is kind of like, man, why, I kind of feel like he, I don't know, I don't want to say sold out, but it, Kind of fits, and I don't want to act at all bad mouth George Lucas. He's a great filmmaker. Without him, in the film world, we wouldn't have Star Wars, but there wouldn't be a lot of other movies around either. Um, you know, Titanic w might probably wouldn't have been made because, as below that movie is, because James Cameron quit his job as a truck driver when he saw Star Wars to be a director. Star Wars was a huge influence for filmmakers of today also like uh, Christopher Nolan uh, and you can see elements of Star Wars and Inception and Interstellar both great films um, yeah, that movie and then inspired helped inspire some of the imagination and thinking of like Peter Jackson too like with some of the Lord of the Rings and the, perhaps like some of the special effects and all that. Um, I mean, there's a lot of other aspects of filmmaking with Nolan and Jackson, I know. But, you know, Star Wars really was revolutionary and changed the way people looked at movies as well as how movies were made. And that's my favorite movie, and that's I think that's another reason why, aside from the retelling of an old fairy tale set in a science fiction environment is really cool. It brings something new and original that people hadn't seen before. And... Yeah. You know, Lucas worked hard. He... controlled everything on the Star... on the Star Wars movie set in the trilogy, you know. What he wanted happened, what the directors of four or five and six happened, you know, the only thing that the studio really forced on Lucas for Star Wars was, um, sorry, this, um, the date, like the release date, that was really the only thing they mandated that he had to finish filming by this certain day. Uh, Otherwise, it won't be released. It's just the 
finding able to get Paul, and that's the end of that. Um, but he pulled through, and look what he accomplished. You know, industrial light and magic thrived and did a lot more things. Skywalker Sound came of it, and lots of things. Um, THX, the sound company, and Lucas film, Lucas and his computer graphics company actually created the mold of what became Pixar, which, after many years of just releasing their films, Disney also bought. And to me, I'm just kind of like, I haven't personally seen a Disney film that they themselves made that hasn't been owned that they don't own a certain company that does it all and uh, they you know make a good profit off of it from owning it and helping release it uh, wider than perhaps what they would have been able to do before um, I haven't really seen an original work of made by Disney that I, in years, that I thought, this was phenomenal, this was a, a great film. That's just me personally. Um, I think the last one was like, uh, The Princess and the Frog. Um, or Tangled, Tangled, if, I think Tangled came out after that. Tangled was alright. Um, but Princess and the Flo Frog was really good. I really like that. I like that more than Tangled. Uh, nothing gets Tangled, because I... I have nieces. I babysat them and watched some stuff like that with them, so that's why I know this. Plus, I like movies, so I was bound to probably see this at some point in time. Uh, maybe in years when I have kids and I, if I have a girl, I might buy that for them to watch or something. Uh, but what I'm emphasizing is Lucas fought and won independence. He was able to make the films he wanted to be made. He produced films he would have liked to have seen made. He wrote stories and got people with the stories of films he wrote made into films. You know, he did so much on his own. And to me, I'm just kind of like, he just gave it up. He got four billion dollars, and yes, he did. Granted, he did give it he donated it to charity, which, you know, kudos to him, you know. If you're not going to keep it and do something like, do something else with it, giving it to a charity is good. Um, and, because I'm like, you know, Disney was, Disney's kind of just a obvious go-getter, I guess, for movies and just giving them to a certain getting a film company to get bought by Disney, I guess is the is this way. And I'm not trying to trash Disney either. I know it sounds like that as well as Lucas, but I just personally haven't seen a fantastic Disney movie in a long time. And I just wish uh, Disney uh, I just wish that he looked a little more instead of just going to Disney, which it seems like he went to right away. Because it sounds like the negotiations were months, months, months before he sold. And Mark Hamill and Carrie Fisher had lunch to talk about perhaps reprising the roles of Luke and Leia. And I just was like... Man, you accomplished so much. And I'm not saying he threw it away. I know it could come out like that, but it's just like, no, come on. And then when I heard they're announcing Star Wars 7 through 9, and then spinoff movies, and do you really think they'll just stop after 9 movies? I'm sure they'll go to, after that, 10 through 12 will come out, and then so on and so forth. And, and you know what? I love Star Wars. I've kind of, maybe not as well as I could have, but I've kind of illustrated very well why I love Star Wars. And I love George Lucas for what he's accomplished and helped contribute to film. And I just wish 
that he could have perhaps looked at Fox. And I say that because Fox was the only company, thanks to Alan Ladd Jr., and I know he's not there anymore, but really, he, that was the only company that actually gave a chance on Star Wars. You know, if they didn't do that, you know, and they didn't give him the freedom that Lucas got and showed and demonstrated he did well with, there may not be as many successful independent filmmakers around today. You know, that's another thing. You know, I personally would love to own my own film business. Um, my, the friend, the people I'm working with, a couple of them, they own their own film business. And, you know, granted they're not known worldwide, um, but they do great stuff. They work hard. Um, and uh, more stuff of them in the description too but they it's called the, the company is called 3B Entertainment and their YouTube channel is 3B Television and they have some great stuff um, and for me I'm just kind of like we don't need more Star Wars no more Star Wars. I love Star Wars, and that kind of, it's kind of a lot coming from somebody who loves the F Star Wars franchise and films and shows, saying we don't need more Star Wars movies. Um, they canceled Disney canceled the Clone Wars. They also shut down Lucas Arts, which was a great company. Um, but that's just kind of like. Uh, why Disney? Why? And I have yet to hear a reason why they shut down those two things. Why they canceled the Clone Wars. Why they shut down LucasArts. Also, the re-releases of episodes 2 through 6 in 3D. I saw episode 1 in 3D and it was... It reminded me when I was like a kid seeing it for the first time in the movie theater. It was exciting. And I loved it every second of it seeing it again on the big screen in 3D. And granted, the 3D wasn't spectacular, but I thought it was good. I thought because it's very subtle. There are things I saw, me personally, there were things like that did come out of me. Not like, like right at you, but, you know, just enough. Like, there's 3D, there's 3D. Like some of the lightsabers swung little coming out of the screen and stuff um, that was cool um, but I wanted, I really wanted to see two through six in theaters and you know what why don't you pause on um, releasing seven through nine Disney you could have been re releasing them all in order from 2012 to 2006 17, that's six years. Each movie, there would be a new Star Wars, new, uh, a Star Wars film every year in 3D. And they could have done well, plus then afterwards they could have had, uh, you know, seven through nine more years afterwards and so on. And, you know, eventually people are just going to get tired of Star Wars. I'm just going to say that. Why not just re-release those films? People love those, especially the original trilogy, where you can make a good penny off of those. Like every 10th anniversary or something, like the original trilogy, do that. You know, that'd be cool. You do it, like, every 10 years that way. It, you know, doesn't know... Some might say it gets repetitive, but it wouldn't be as repetitive as every five years. That might get tired, tiresome, but... Yeah, it's... I don't hate Disney. I don't, I know it might sound like I do, but... It's just, I'm like... I have a bad feeling about this. And no offense to anybody at Disney, and you know... My tune could change afterwards. Um, but the thing is, 
people say, oh, Disney's done a great job. Look at Marvel. Like, look at Avengers. The thing is, people at Disney, from what I've read, they don't actually make decisions. I could be wrong, but from what I've read and other stuff, they don't do any decision making except perhaps, like, that's a good idea for a film to be made. Yeah, or maybe, you know, let's not do that, or let's hold off on that for a while until we finish this stuff that we're doing. And that's just something people blindly say, whoa, Disney owns Marvel. Look at the Avengers, that was great. I like the Avengers. I didn't think it was f as phenomenal as everyone else says, but... You know, I liked it. It was good, entertaining fun. It was a good time. Had by all in the movie theater. And, um, you know, it was a good movie. Uh, to me, I uh, just like, man. You know, people like to jump on a bandwagon of loving something or hating something. People hate the prequels, but love the new ones. Um, my thing is, you may hate the prequels, but you know what? At least Lucas made them with a love and care that he wanted to finish the series. And he said many times, it's over and it's done, but now, of course, we all know otherwise. Um, and Disney just seems to be making them for money. It may sound like it. Describing them as greedy. Okay. But really, what what is the point? What is the point of these new movies? I could read a book that follows... That basically happens like a couple of years or so after... Uh, episode 6. There are a lot of books that happen in various series and they're great I granted I haven't written any in a while or a long time well both but I would like to and you know I enjoy that stuff I'm just like wow it's pretty cool uh, and even after episode 3 came out in theaters and after I saw that I was kind of like that was amazing and it's sad because it's over but I'm like I wish there was like a 7th through 9 or 7 through 12 like you know another 3 to 6 movies but I never really was was really serious that was just kind of something that's like it's over I wish it didn't end soon And but in hindsight when you look back like a couple of years you're glad it ended I'm glad it ended the way it did I'm glad it wrapped up the whole Star Wars saga and it ended it has a beginning middle and an end that's going to be like a beginning middle and end and epilogue that's how I'm seeing it. I'm not going to see the prequels are the beginning, the original is the end, the sequel trilogy is... Or original trilogy is the middle, and the sequel trilogy is the end. I'm not seeing it that way. Just added on stuff. And, um... Just food for thought. 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 I can't talk right. I'm sorry. Oh, and another thing. The title of episode 7, The Force Awakens. So I guess The Force slept for 30 years based off that title? Because it's supposed to be taking place... This movie takes place 30 years after Return of the Jedi. Maybe The Force rests. I could see that. Since The Force, in a way, is kind of like God... As Obi Wan describes to Luke, it's in, the Force is what gives a Jedi his power. Well, in a way, God, if you're religious, gives power to everything, the universe, planets, planets, trees, even us to an extent. Granted, we go and get food and stuff, whether we kill it or buy it and make make it and buy it or whatever. Uh, Force is what gives a Jedi his power. It's an energy field. Like God 
is somewhat of an energy field. It surrounds us. Like God is everywhere. Penetrates us. It's in all in all living things. That's what God does. That's what the force does. And again, I don't want to get all religious on people, but you know, from a religious standpoint, if you're looking at Star Wars and religion, there you go. Force is God. Chosen one's Jesus. Though I've often been as yeah, the chosen one's kind of like Jesus. But I've often wondered, like, is Anakin really the chosen one? He slaughtered people, a bunch of people, and Jesus never killed anybody. So, I mean, in Star Wars, yes, somebody at least will kill. Somebody will kill at least one person in that universe. But well, if they're like fighting and stuff and all this, they will. Um, but I don't know. That's another story, I guess. But yeah, the Force Awakens. I guess with all the description I just gave of the Force, people might might not have been as must have been a little less powerful and didn't have as much energy. And if it sleeps, unless if the Force sleeps, and then perhaps maybe more energy is given, like it's recharging, and perhaps. Gets feeds off and gives the same amount, but when it awakens, it gives mo them the Jedi and Sith and energy that is even powerful. I don't know. Uh, hopefully, the film uh, will explain the title. You know, it'll make sense. I'm hoping that at least. But if it doesn't. I don't know. I'm just not thrilled with the title at the moment. It could grow on me. It could be explained in the film when it comes out if it hasn't grown on me by that point. Or it just might still, you know, the title may still bite the big one. Phantom Menace is kind of maybe wondered, but I think the Phantom Menace is like supposed to be like, you know, the Sith. They're like the Phantom Menace. A menacing phantom through the galaxy. Some say a new hope is lame, but after episode three, Luke is the new hope. Luke and Leia are the new hope. Luke is the hope for the Force, since he's the one learning the Force more. Because in the books and stuff, Leia doesn't learn how to become a Jedi too. But for the films, you know, she also leads the rebellion, and she hel she helps lead the rebellion into victory, which in a way, with com combined with what Luke is doing, helps bring peace to the galaxy. Thus, a new hope. Luke and Leia are that is that new hope. Uh, so, yeah, hopefully the hopefully if. It, if it keeps going by that record and stuff, it explains a little more, or it might need some thinking after watching the film many times, like episodes one and four. The title could make sense and be cool. Uh, as much of this negative stuff I've said about Star Wars being owned by Disney and stuff. I'm such a Star Wars fan, I will see it. No matter what I say, no matter what negative thing that could be a nitpick or genuine criticism, I know I'm going to see it, no matter what I say. I will not deny that. Uh, but this is this is all I've got to say for right now. And um, I don't know when I will... Do another one of these, maybe pretty quick, maybe not. Um, oh, happy belated Halloween. It's middle of November. A little late, but better late than ever. Um, happy early Thanksgiving, if I don't make one prior to this. I might make something else for Thanksgiving. Don't get your hopes of you ten people watching me. Uh, but... Uh, who knows? Uh, 
I want to try to film something at least Thanksgiving with my family. There's some people who would help me with that. Um, I think um, we could do something. Um, but yeah, this is Jared's Corner, and that's all I've got to say. This was long, and yeah. Uh, anyway. That's my rant, and thank you for rant slash criticisms and critique, I guess, on Star Wars and Exodus, on my take on those things with Bale. Again, I don't think he said that stuff until I hear from his mouth that he actually, like, apologizes for that, if offending anyone, or... Says he's sorry and perhaps should have worded what he said differently. I'm not gonna. I'm not buying what uh, some reporter said, which could have just been jazzed up for the uh, news of it. And Star Wars Seven. We don't need any more Star Wars movies, but I will see it anyway. Opening day, so probably at midnight, but I don't know. Um, so a year away. Also, another rant thing, I guess. Uh, it, it can't follow the Star Wars tradition and release in May. Well, that's a minor thing, but still, I just kind of, I guess, got to get that in there. <laughs> but I understand with filming and all, but uh, still, we don't really need more Star Wars movies. You may differ for your opinion on that stuff. May differ from mine. That's cool. All free to have our own opinions but if you say anything comment please don't be a tool and say I'm an idiot or someone else is an idiot for not agreeing with you or whatever and, and no dick writing please yeah I may have been dick writing I guess myself I don't think I did but uh, I guess I was trying to make some points and I just got lost in the moment but if I did do some Dick writing, I apologize, but there you go. Uh, yeah. Anyway, thank you for watching. Peace out.